Today we're going to be talking about making the zipper portion of your boxed cushion. This is usually assuming it doesn't have to be a welted cushion, but it is a separate section where we have boxing that goes around the front and the sides, and then the zipper is usually in the back someplace. So what we're going to be doing is showing you how to actually make that portion of it. So the first thing you need to do is cut your zipper boxing two inches wider than what it's going to be when the cushion is finished. Now what I've done here is I've, I'm planning on making a cushion that is three inches wide. So I've cut this zipper boxing five inches wide by the length of the zipper. In this case, I decided that the zipper needed to be about 28 inches long. Okay, which is, it's usually about, when we're doing a cushion, typically an upholsterer will cut the boxing about eight inches longer than the actual width of the back of the cushion. So that allows for about four inches wrap on either side of the cushion. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to a sewing machine and we're actually going to sew the cut edges on lengthwise together. Now I know it looks weird and people are going to say, what in the world's going on? However, it works out very well for my students whenever they use the, do it in this method, they end up with a nicer, neater, straighter looking zipper. Okay, so now I'm using, this happens to be an industrial machine, but it uses regular standard sewing thread. This step is one that you can use on any of your household sewing machine. You just want regular sewing thread. If you can, uh, I like to avoid using the upholstery weight thread because it's a lot easier to take out, I mean a lot harder to take out than, this, than the, the regular standard um, sewing thread. And then the other thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you have your sewing machine set to the longest stitch it will make because this is actually a machine base, that's all it is. Okay, so I'm just going to pull my cup edges together and I'm going to sew a half an inch seam allowance. Okay, so for somebody that has a hard time judging a half an inch, my, my seam allowance is just slightly wide right now. So that's what made me think of this. I forgot to do this. When you need to, if you have a hard time judging your half inch seam allowance, you can take a, a ruler like this little six inch thing um, and take, line up a half inch mark with the needle and then you slide this magnet. It's, uh, different machines have different ones for it. If you're using a computerized machine, you definitely don't want to use this. Uh, but they make, there's things that you can screw onto the bed of your machine that will allow you to just set your own seam guide. So anyway, so that's about what I'm going to be doing. I don't happen to like them. They seem, I feel like they get in my way, but some people it's, it's a really, really, it's really helpful for them. So anyway, that's, I just wanted to point that out to you. And don't backstitch either end. Okay, now. Next thing we want to do is we want to open up this folded edge. So we're going to take this and we're going to take our scissors and run it right down the center. I'm pulling the, the scissor blade up against the fold of the fabric to get a nice straight cut. So now you have your boxing opened up and then you have your seam here that we'll be inserting the zipper into. So now we're going to go over to the sewing machine with the zipper foot. We've switched over to uh, a machine that is set up with the zipper foot. You can see that there is very little foot in the way on the one side of the zipper. Some feet, you know, it can be wrapped the other way. It doesn't really matter. It's just as long as you have one side of your foot is really uh, where the needle can be really close to the sewing that you're going to be doing. Now the other thing that scares people that I, that well, my students uh, when I um, instruct them is I have you sew in such a way that you don't see the zipper tape at all, in the, until, in, except for in the portions of when you're lining things up. Here we use zipper by the yard, so I have just a, cut a length of zipper that is approximately the same length as my box. I think you can see the whole thing. We're going to open it up we kind of finger press open the seam and then we're going to take our zipper tape the side that has the teeth 
that's, that's our protruding is the, it's considered the, what they call the right side of the zipper. And where it's kind of flat, that's the back side. So what we want to do is we want to take the teeth of the zipper, line it up right at that stitch line. See that stitch line so that it's centered like that. Now, if you have a hard time getting it under the foot to start, we can put a pin there. I'm going to reach over and get a pin. Okay. Some people have a hard time with this first start, when they first start. So what I'm going to do is put a pin here, so you can see that. So it's lined up. Either way you look at it, this, that stitch line is lined up right with the teeth. So what we're going to do now is we're going to sew one side. slide it under the foot. Now I place the foot approximately where this, this side of the foot is one eighth of an inch or so away from the stitch line. So when you're actually stitching it, it works into it works out to about a quarter of an inch away from the, 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 the seam. Okay, pull the zipper out and the teeth the pin out. And now, every time you stop, you want to make sure that your needle is down in the fabric for this particular method. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, my boxing and I'm, f I'm actually literally press, finger pressing the, making sure that the seam allowance stays open. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull on the seam allowance, I mean on the zipper tape, line up that stitch line right at the center of those teeth. Now, now this part is really important when you're doing this method. You, what you want to do is you want to, you're going to have some, you're going to play a little bit of tug of war with the sewing machine. What we're going to do is I'm going to pull on it just a little bit and line, have it lined up and I'm going to take my hands, I'm right handed so I'm going to use my right hand, I'm pulling on the fabric a little bit too because I want to keep this taut. If you don't hold on to this stuff you're going to end up with a, a funky looking gathered up zipper. So it's really important that you hold on to it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm taking the zipper tape lifting it up, pinching it in, so you'll notice I'm pinching like this, like a death grip. So I don't want it to go anywhere. Now, I, now I'm playing tug-of-war with the sewing machine. Now I'm not going to fight the sewing machine, but I am playing tug-of-war with it a little bit because I want to make sure that this stays taut. That's very important in here to keep this taut. And you let the machine pull it through. So you do not allow your fabric or your tape to slide through your fingers. So you're going to let the sewing machine pull your hand with it. So I'm literally, I'm pulling it, holding it, holding it, holding it. Okay, needle down. Lift up. Line up. Pull up. Hold. Okay, now, we're just going to turn around and we're going to go up the other side. Now that it's already held, it's, this is real simple to do this side. Everything's already holding in place, all you need to do is just sew it. So you end up with a, it looks pretty nice. I have a little bit of a wobble here and there. Which most people, you see, even in the professional ones, they're usually a little bit of a wobble. But you never notice that once you get things cut and ready and then actually installed on the cushion, it looks perfectly straight. Now, next thing we want to do is open that basted seam. Now, that, this is why I do this step on a, on a sewing machine with a reusing standard sewing thread. Okay, so take the, your uh, seam ripper, the little ball on the end, so we're going to take that, put the ball down on the underside of the seam, and you literally just hang on to your zipper that you've just made and push this through. If you have a, a, a dull seam ripper, you might have a tendency to push too hard and you might cut your fabric, so you be careful about this. This happens to be a really good seam, allowance, um, seam ripper. So I'm just able to pull it, push it all the way through. It grabbed some of the thread for me, that was nice. Now. Now it's, the zipper is open, look at this. Looks lovely. Now, once you've got your zipper finished sewing, 
then we need to put the slide on. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take grab one end of the, of the teeth and pull it apart a couple of inches or so. Doesn't matter because this is a nylon tooth zipper. It doesn't matter whether you so whether you do this end or the other end. What does matter is how you slide your slide on. It's we call this the head, or at least I do, where it's you got two openings, and then the back side of it is got it's one one larger opening. So what we're going to do is also you have to hold this tab up because uh, if you can see the little pointy things. Those are locks, and when it's down in, in that position, that zipper, the slide is locked into place, and the zipper can't slide open or closed. So we've got to keep the tab open while we're doing this part of it. Now, I'm going to hold it. Slide one side on. Don't go all the way through like that. You don't want to go all the way through. Leave you know, maybe three or four teeth inside the body of this slide. Grab the other side, pull it, push it in, kind of on an angle here, slide it in, and now what I do is I check the bottom, oops it's not lined up, okay, uh, it actually is all lined, no I lost it on the other side, so this is what happens sometimes, okay, I can do it the other side, it doesn't matter which side you start on, you can do either one, I actually heard it click into place, so it's actually, it looks good, it's pretty close, it's within within one tooth, and that's perfectly fine to do. And then you just slide it on, put the slide into the middle, and leave it there until you're finished making your cushion.